These I was expecting. We've got the OnePlus 12 and 12R with OnePlus proudly displaying their never settle slogan and talking a lot about a return to their flagship killer roots. What I wasn't expecting is this. A 50 watt wireless charger? This thing will charge wirelessly faster than most phones charge over a wire. Even many flagships like, oh, I don't know, the iPhone 15 and the Samsung S24 Ultra. We're gonna get to that in a minute. Let's start with the OnePlus 12. They have absolutely packed this thing with kind of jaw-dropping claims. Oh, wow, is that ever gorgeous? Jeez, Oppo has always pushed the envelope when it comes to the design of their backs. Sorry, they have packed this thing with features, with everything from 80 watt wired charging with their Super VOOC technology, which no way, they actually include a capable charger in the box. What an idea to 50 watt wireless charging to a claimed peak brightness of 4,500 nits on their OLED display. Now, we weren't able to measure that outside of the developer menu where they have a peak brightness test and then you can shine a bright flashlight into the ambient light sensor in order to get it to hit that number. OnePlus also claimed 20 hours of YouTube playback, which this phone completely annihilated. We saw almost 28 hours of playback in YouTube at 200 nits display brightness. Wow. On the outside of the phone, we've got the usual suspects with our lock button, volume rocker. Does this thing have an IR emitter? Super cool. Amplified earpiece speaker and bottom speaker SIM slot and USB-C charging port along with OnePlus's trademark notification slider. You gotta love to see it. And on the inside, it's got the latest Snapdragon 8 Gen 3 processor with OnePlus's biggest vapor chamber cooler to date. They're saying it's about 14 square inches in area, which is pretty wild when you consider the overall size of the device. OnePlus says this contributes to both the cooling of the screen and cooling of the SoC, but we'll get to this in a little bit more detail later. We found that Having a bigger vapor chamber doesn't necessarily help you avoid thermal throttling if you don't add any kind of active cooling to the outside of the device. The cameras are another big area of focus for OnePlus. That is a sizable camera bump, but far from the deepest one that I've seen lately. It's pretty manageable. And we're looking at a 50 megapixel main shooter with a 64 megapixel periscope telephoto and a 48 megapixel ultra wide. That is a really fast lens on the main shooter too. F1.6 with optical image stabilization. Actually have pretty high expectations for this. The one area where OnePlus has really struggled for me in the past has been video, but in terms of photo, like, man, that's responsive. That's a ton of dynamic range. Like, I really just don't really know what I would complain about. It's stutter though, as I'm panning around. Yeah, it's no iPhone, is it? It's not bad, but it's no iPhone. If there's one thing that you gotta give to Apple, God, does video ever look good on the iPhone? Excuse me, excuse me. On iPhone. Inside the phone, we've got Wi-Fi 7, Bluetooth 5.4, 12, or 16 gigs of RAM with 256 or 512 gigs of storage, and Corning Victus 2 glass with an aluminum frame. Enough about the 12, because the 12, okay, flagship killer, I guess, now that flagships are 1200 US dollars, the 12 are is the one that I think is gonna be in a more interesting price band for many of our viewers today. It's got a lot of the same goodness as the 12. It's got that same 4,500 nit peak brightness on its also LTPO 120 hertz AMOLED display for that Oh, so butter smoothness. It's got the same number of cameras, but they have been downgraded a touch. It's got the same support for 80 watt Super VOOC charging, including an included charging brick, which is really nice to see, but it's got a bit of a smaller screen and some other unexpected exclusions. No wireless charging, although that does come with a benefit. You actually get a 100 milliamp hour larger battery in the 12R, and that did result in real world gains in battery life. This thing saw almost 30 hours of battery life in our YouTube playback test. That is flipping impressive. But the bigger one is that it uses the Snapdragon 8 Gen 2. It is using a last generation chipset. However, as we saw in our performance testing, this might not be as big of a deal to you as you might think. As it turns out, in our benchmark suite, which admittedly at this point is gonna need some upgrading, 
the real world difference in performance is almost negligible because we are more often capped by the frame rate limiter of the applications that we are running than by the performance of the SOC. Another thing that we noticed when we were doing our performance testing was that in our stress test, the 12 actually thermal throttled so much that even though it scores much higher in synthetic benchmarks like 3D Mark, when you run them over and over and over again, it throttles down to performance that is only about 10% higher. So if you're a hardcore mobile gamer and you're gonna be playing for hours at a time, the real world difference in performance might not be that much. Now, some of that can be accounted for by the slightly higher resolution of the OnePlus 12's screen, but not all of it. It does have the same Victus 2 glass covering, but what it doesn't have is the same storage options. It's only available with 128 or 256 gigs of storage. I also haven't really tried the camera yet, so here's what we're gonna do. I'm gonna take some pictures with this after I tell you about our sponsor. Oh God, it's Dbrand. They are supporting the OnePlus 12. Show images on screen. Apparently that's all Dbrand wants me to say about their OnePlus 12 skins because they instead wanted to use this ad spot to make me read a Reddit thread. I assume that's why you're standing here with a computer. Oh, this. Oh. Oh. I've seen the Reddit thread. Let's get Dbrand's attention to sponsor Linus to dye his hair blonde again, upside down, smiley face. It should be for charity, like sponsoring a computer club for you Now you've put me in a position where if I say no, I'm basically saying no to children. You know what you did. I should be using this as an opportunity. See, look, that is the face of a... That's the mug of a man who knows what he did. I guess let Dbrand know in the comments if you'd like me to disappoint children or if you'd like me to raise some money for children. Uh, I can already tell this, these cameras are not as good. It looks like I've got something on the lens, but I did not. Stills are all right though. Yeah, stills are all right. That video quality though. <laughs> and I haven't even tried the ultra wide yet. It's only eight megapixels. That's one of the biggest downgrades over the OnePlus 11 because otherwise on paper, the 12R looks like an amazing choice compared to the 11. They've got very similar specs other than we get upgraded glass, a bigger battery, faster charging. Ooh, there is one small little bugbear. OnePlus originally said that the 12R had UFS 4.0 support for its storage, but it's actually 3.1. So that's a downgrade over a OnePlus 11 if you could get a deal on one of those. But other than that, man, I think the cameras are the biggest deal. And I don't know about you guys, but the only time I ever use my ultra wide camera is when I wanna take a picture of a room and like put markup on it. Like, honestly, that's the only thing I think I've ever used it for is like, uh, yeah, um, here's a picture of this room. We're going to Ikea. I'm gonna write some measurements and like where those spots are so that I can remember what my room looks like when I'm walking around in that labyrinthian store. It's like, it feels like you're in there for so long. You don't even know what year it is or where you live anymore. Both phones are only rated for IP65 water resistance, which is a little on the weaker side for a modern device, but they've got something water related that is pretty darn cool. OnePlus has something that they're calling Aqua Touch. And sorry, what is this? Hyper Touch algorithm makes it like work better when the screen is wet. I've been provided with a spritzer bottle and I guess I'll attempt to type a message. I mean, that seems like pretty good, right? Let's, let's go for accuracy, okay? Give me a hundred character sentence, go. Subscribe to short. Oops, that was me. Circuit. That is pretty darn good. It's bang on. Oh, I like it. Uh, here we go. I mean, what could go wrong? Um, oh boy. Well, <laughs> that's something. I can't even get, I can't even get a text box. Hello, I am typing a thing. Oh! <laughs> And we lost it. Yeah, that's pretty much the experience I have whenever my hands are wet in the tub. We're down to 34%, which means it's time to try 50 watt wireless charging. And what I'm really interested in is what's shaken with our charger here. We're at 30 watts from the wall. There will be quite a bit of inefficiency going from AC to DC, then from TC to um, magnetic induction charging. Is that it? It's going down. Airbook charging, buddy. 
This isn't the only thing we weren't able to see working the way OnePlus said, their frame interpolation technology. We just couldn't get it working and they're on Chinese New Year right now. So they were like, oh, we can't really look into this. So your mileage may vary on that as well. But 27 watts from the wall, that means realistically, we're probably only getting about 20 watts here. It's possible that it'll only do that kind of speed from 0%, but we're at 35. I think it's a pretty reasonable expectation that it would charge pretty fast when it's at 35%. Oh, there's one more thing. We haven't checked out the speakers yet. Oh my God, Google, this was such a mistake. What is any of this? Remember when the mail icon was red? So you could actually tell what the hell it was? And when maps was a map? Sorry, sorry, sorry. This is, this is not OnePlus's fault. 100% on Google. A little bright, but a big part of the problem is how loud I have it. I wouldn't normally need this at 100%. It's really good. Yeah, it's really clean. Yeah, how about the 12R? Amplified earpiece speaker. Nice to see that on a budget phone. This is still an expensive phone, but it's a little thing that is often cheaped out on. If there's a downgrade here, it's not gonna affect you too much. I'd say they're not quite as bright, but they're still really loud and clear enough that you're gonna be able to enjoy pretty much anything you would wanna enjoy on your phone speakers, and otherwise you're just gonna to wanna to get out your, your earphones or whatever the case may be. Now it's time for the hard question. Which one would I choose? $300 less, but that does come with a capacity downgrade here, not to mention, of course, the spec downgrade, or $300 more, but of course, with more capacity, more performance, and bursty loads in particular. I think this just comes down to your budget and what kind of deal you're gonna get from your carrier. As someone who takes a lot of pictures of my kids, I am really not liking not having a decent camera on my phone right now, and I'd say that that could be something that could push me over the edge to the 12, but I wanna hear from you guys in the comments. 12 or 12R or something else entirely. Whatever it is, I don't care. As long as you're subscribed to Short Circuit.